Greetings, my name is Jason Sheeran, and I want to welcome you to my 10 Nights of Halloween. <laughs> Greetings, and welcome to the second night of Jason's 11 Nights of Halloween. In today's video, or sorry, tonight's video, I know I'm doing this during the day, but this has to be out by 7 p.m. tonight, and it's just, I don't know. I, I wanted to do this last night, but I had a lot to do. But I'll try to do more of these, but in today's video, we're going to be taking a look at something that has piqued my interest for the longest time, but I never really got a chance to read it. But we're doing a creepy pasta reading. More specifically, the NES Godzilla creepy pasta. Now, if you're unaware of the NES Godzilla game, they're referring to the game Godzilla Monster of Monsters, or as AVGN calls it, Godzee Monster of Monsters, because Godzilla is blocking half the title. But yeah, we're going to be reading. Part of the creepypasta reading, there are eight chapters and an epilogue. In today's video, we'll be reading chapter one. So before I do that, if you find yourself enjoying this video, be sure to leave a like and subscribe for more. It would really help out a ton. Also, it would really help out if you could follow my Instagram. That's the Jason Sheeran on Instagram, and follow me on TikTok at Jason Sheeran if you want the full experience of this channel, like just to help my channel grow. I know all YouTubers do this, but it really helps out. But yeah, anyway, without further ado, let's get into the, um, to the story. Let's read the um, prologue first. It says here, NES Godzilla Creepypasta is a very long pasta about, well, just that. Originally written by Cosby Daff, I hope I said that correctly, on Bog Leech, this pasta is known both for its length and for being extremely image heavy. It is so long, in fact, it had to be split into sub pages, retrieved from here. The original posted in the Bog Leech forums can be found here. So, we're not going to read that over here, so let's just get to chapter one real quick. Okay, so I think this is all chapter one, so... Okay, what we got here? NES Godzilla Creepypasta, Chapter 1, Earth and Mars. This should be interesting. Okay. <clears throat> when I was a little kid, the two things I loved most in life were Godzilla and NES games. So naturally, when Godzilla Monster of Monsters came out, it was like a dream come true. Well, almost. To sum it up, most of the game revolved around getting through very repetitive outer space levels while smashing up tanks and jets, and then fighting against Godzilla's monster enemies. Overall, it was pretty mediocre, but back then I didn't care. When I got the same game as a present for my 10th birthday, I played it night and day as much as I could. Unfortunately, I had traded the game for Amagen a year later, much to my regret when I found out what that game was like. Recently, I had bought a new NES system, and through a lot of hunting and asking around, my friend Billy managed to finally find a copy of Godzilla Monster of Monsters. I was pumped to play my favorite childhood game. It never occurred to me to ask where Billy found it. He also gave me some other games like Legend of Zelda, Bomberman, and some stupid thing called Action 52, but Godzilla had to come first. So I started the game, and the nostalgia came flooding back like a tidal wave. Godzilla's 8-bit theme song flooded proudly through the speakers, and I was soon grinning like an idiot. Some people laugh at me for playing such outdated games, but I've never had as much enjoyment for any games other than those on the NES. Those 8-bit games take me back to when things were much simpler, more safe, but after what's happened with this game, I don't have those feelings anymore. 
I had forgotten how quick the fun of smashing things as Godzilla wore off in the scrolling levels. The game bombards you with bullets and things crashing into you from every direction, and you're too big to avoid most of them. Although my excitement had worn down some, it wasn't long at all before I got into my first boss battle. My first opponent was Gizora, an obscure squid kaiju who had never been in a Godzilla movie. The most annoying thing about fighting Gizora is that he always backs you into a corner and starts smacking you with his tentacle, and you're unable to move until he gets off you. This move doesn't do any damage, but it can stall you until the timer runs out and you have to start the fight over and he regains some health. It's as annoying as it sounds, and of course, he did it when I fought him. Only for some reason this caused the game to glitch up, because once he started smacking me, he never stopped. The timer is supposed to end the fight in about 40 seconds, but this lasted for nearly 5 minutes. After a while, the graphics started to mess up with little red blocks all over the place. And as you can see here, look at it all glitched up, the picture right there. Ah, that kind of looks dark and scary. Ugh. Which was weird, but I just took the game out, blew on it, and then started again. I wasn't about to let a little glitch stand in my way. So I started again, and this time defeated Gizora and the level's other boss monster, Magara, without any problems. So then it was on to the next planet, Mars. I browsed around the board and found something unexpected. Where Varen's piece should have been, there was instead a piece representing Titanosaurus. There were only ten kaiju in the game, and Titanosaurus was not one of them. Or so I thought. Perhaps Titanosaurus was originally intended to be in the game, but was swapped out with Varen for some reason. As you can see here, Titanosaurus with 12 life, as you can see there. And there's Gazora, Magra, volcanoes, all that stuff. So I began to feel very excited. Not only was I playing my favorite game, but I was playing a prototype of some sort with a new monster. Needless to say, I ran through the levels as fast as I could to see Titanosaurus in action. I fought Gizora again and beat him before he could do his tentacle smack, but this time the glitch started happening when he died. Gizora's sprite didn't sink to the bottom, but instead seemed to be devoured by the glitch, and his eye started randomly spawning all over the screen. Oh, wow, that, that looks pretty messy. Godzilla's the only thing not glitchy here. Like, look at him. Godzilla's just looking like, wait, what the hell's going on? And then you got Gazora over here just glitching out like, oh, Godzilla, I don't feel so good. <laughs> as if he was snapped by Thanos or something. I know that these glitches with Gizora were my first warning sign that something was very wrong with this game, but foolishly, I ignored it and proceeded on to fight Magara, who this time had a glitch of his own. And as you can see here, Magara towers over Godzilla. Like, Godzilla's just looking like, how the hell am I supposed to beat this guy? Why is Magara on steroids? I do not know. This is basically like that scene where Godzilla had to fight Mecha Godzilla in Godzilla vs. Kong. You know, like Mecha Godzilla towered over Godzilla. But anyway, let's continue. Magara was twice the size he should have been, which startled me. He was also considerably harder to beat than usual, which is to say not at all. But soon I had defeated him almost, and when he died, yet another glitch happened. Holy crap. Not only is he twice the size of Godzilla, but he looks like he's been snapped by Thanos as well. What is going on here? Like, why does the game keep glitching? Like, I really don't know. This is really interesting. Why did I not read this sooner? This happened extremely fast, so I was lucky to get a screen cap of it at all. But what happened was that the giant Magara sprite started to shatter and melt. Also, if you look at the garbled text at the right corner of the screen, you'll notice what happens to be a birdcage. 
I still have no idea what that meant. At this point, I was about to fight Titanosaurus, and I was worried as to what kind of glitches would happen this time, but to my surprise, Titanosaurus looked just fine. Although all of the game's bipedal monsters were the same height, Titanosaurus was a bit taller. But since Titanosaurus actually was taller than Godzilla in his film debut, Terror of Mecha Godzilla, I thought this was kind of cool. That actually looks pretty cool. Like, Titanosaurus actually looks pretty normal. After a fun fight with the monster that wasn't supposed to be in the game, I took over the enemy base and proceeded not to Jupiter like normal, but instead to Pathos. Wow, okay, this is actually some interesting stuff. Pathos must be an original planet of some sort. And isn't Jupiter technically a gas giant anyway? So how would Godzilla be able to survive on that planet? Okay, I've only been recording for about 15 minutes, and I feel like we should read Chapter 2 next. So I'm just going to go ahead and read Chapter 2. Okay. NES Godzilla Creepypasta, Chapter 2, Pathos. Pathos was the same as Jupiter in layout, except the board was dark blue rather than green. The first thing I noticed was that all the usual level icons had been replaced by a blue rock and some kind of orange honeycomb shape. There was one icon that had part of the jungle icon shape, but I didn't pay much thought to it. I checked the other side of the board to see the new monster. Instead of Herera, it was Biolanti. But that couldn't have been right. Godzilla vs. Biolanti didn't come out until 1989, and this game was made in 1988. Perhaps Toho put Biolanti in the game to build excitement for the movie next year, but changed their minds? I tried to rationalize the game's abnormalities any way I could but this would prove to be futile. Pathos's map song was the first new song I heard in the game. Like most of the new songs, it was hard to describe. I'll try. It started out slow and suspenseful, much slower than any song in the game. But every 12 seconds or so, there would be a loud clashing sound and the tempo changed. It was like the composer randomly played parts from five different songs with the same instruments. I moved Godzilla over to one of the many blue rock icons that had replaced the jungle icons and started the level. The level resembled a blue mountain range with a blood red planet in the sky. But there was something odd about the mountains. They had a shredded paper look to them. I thought at first maybe the glitch had affected it, but it looked far too intentional. Look here, Godzilla in the uh, background there. Looks pretty weird though. I quickly noticed something else about this new level. There were no enemies at all, not even any obstacles. I should also mention that this was where the point meter started to become glitched beyond comprehension. But it didn't bother me much. I never keep up with game points. So, without having to focus on anything, I listened to the music while walking through the level unopposed. The music had a sorrowful feel to it. It would have been rather pleasant had I heard it in a normal game. The level went on for three screens, but with no obstacles around, I finished it very quickly. I tried other levels of the same type to see if any enemies appear but there were none. There was little else to be seen in the Blue Mountains, so I tried the other level type. I started one of the orange levels, and my eyes were assaulted with the grotesque background of tumorous orange eyes. The sky was the same as the ground, so I assumed the game was indicating that this level takes place in a cave. The only enemies here were Matango spawn, but as you can see, the little bastards were everywhere. The music certainly didn't help, with a mixture of screeching sounds and loud drum beats that sounded like a monster's theme in a horror film. After completing it, I tried to avoid playing through any more of these levels whenever I could. 
The map was short, so it was only a few minutes before I headed towards a rematch with Gizora and Magura, but this time, their sprites and attack patterns were vastly different. I fought Magura first. Magura's replacement was a flying machine with a slight resemblance of a Pascagoula alien. It was a bit like fighting Mothra, only it moved with a lot more grace. It attacked by spinning its front tentacle like a corkscrew, and it still had an eye beam, except now it fired from the drill. Wow, that that's actually pretty creepy. And as you can see here, this actually looks pretty creepy. Godzilla still looks normal, but this is just, I don't know. This is, this is something you would find out of, I don't know, some obscure sci-fi movie. I don't know. It looks like Atlantis meets Star Wars or Star Trek or something. I don't know. This lanky aberration had replaced Gizora, and the new beast was more of a challenge. It would run and jump at a fast pace, constantly swinging its arms around, making it hard to get close. And of course, it tried to pin me in the corner with as much annoying resolve as ever. I defeated it using a combination of tail whips and heat beam spamming. Oh, wow. That thing kind of looks like a cross between the Xenomorph and the Mars Attacks alien. I don't know, with like one eye, kind of like a Cyclops. I defeated them, and was going to fight Titanosaurus. But when I started the fight, Titanosaurus was nowhere to be seen, and the game simply went back to the map with the Titanosaurus piece now missing. There was no one left to fight now but Biolanti, so I eagerly started the battle. I was quite surprised that Biolanti started the fight in a rose form. She was immobile and used tentacles to keep me away from the main body, which took the most damage. As expected, she turned into her final form after taking enough damage. The sprite looked pretty damn good for 8 bits. Wow, this actually does look pretty good. I'm not gonna lie. Biolanti has always been a special kind of monster. I've always liked Biolanti because of just how obscure she looks, you know? Just because of how, you know, like, cool and strange she looks. I gotta watch Godzilla vs. Biolanti at some point. The battle technique was the same, except now Biolanti could move, albeit slower than any other monster. Being hit by the tentacles did more damage now, and Biolanti could do an acid spit which I managed to avoid by jumping in the screen cap. Not much more difficult to beat than Titanosaurus. It only took two rounds, but when Biolanti was gone, the music had stopped, and there was a new icon replacing the base. Wow. Could that be Red? This monster I keep hearing about in the comments section of my videos? This icon wasn't there before I beat Biolanti. It resembled a red tribal mask, and I had a feeling of dread when I saw it. But since it replaced the base, it must be the only way to exit Pathos. I moved Godzilla to the square, and it started the level. It was a hellish-looking place with no sky and a flickering fire in the background. The fire looked far more advanced than anything I've seen on the NES. There was music in the form of a slow, steady drum, sound resembling a heartbeat. Wow. Okay, th this is getting good. This is getting really good. All the text on the top of the screen and the life bar were gone. In their place was a single bit of text in the middle of the screen that said, RUN. My feeling of dread had intensified. I cautiously walked through the level, but like the Blue Mountains, there were no enemies. I paced around for a minute before thinking, run? From what? The first time it hit me, I didn't even see it. I heard a noise outside my room and turned back to see if something fell. And when I looked back, Godzilla was dying. I figured it must have just been a glitch, but I wasn't going to play through the game without Godzilla, so I restarted the game and went to the password screen. 
Have I ever mentioned how creepy the password screen music is? If you've played the game, you know what I mean. It doesn't at all fit the mood of the game. It's more like something from a horror game. Maybe they made it like that so kids wouldn't cheat? I was quite annoyed at this point, because I thought I was going to have to fight all the monsters again, but that didn't happen. The game started me off where I was before I started the red face level. So I tried again, making sure to pay attention this time. That's when I heard a low bellowing sound, and then I saw it. This thing. Do you know that feeling your body has when you feel like you're in extreme danger? You start to recoil and tense up as the adrenaline flows through your veins and your nerves start to feel very cold? That's the feeling I had when I took this screen cap. This is it right here. So this is the red monster we've all been hearing about. And it's chasing Godzilla. Wouldn't Godzilla fight this thing though? Look at him. They're not even, they're like the right size, so Godzilla could probably fight him. I don't know. I haven't seen all the Godzilla movies, but I'm pretty damn sure this was never in any of them. It had to be something the creators made up. But what kind of sick word that would get me demonetized would put this in a children's game? By sheer dumb luck, or perhaps the adrenaline boost, I managed to run fast enough to get away from it. It ran very fast, so much so that if you saw it, you were almost certainly going to die. And when I say die, I mean your monster gets killed instantly if the creature touches it. Wow, so something that can kill Godzilla. Once I had got back to the map, I was so afraid that I was extremely tempted to just shut the game off and try to pretend this never happened. I couldn't believe what I had just seen. It couldn't have been real, and even if I wanted to continue, I still had to get Mothra through this chase level. But as I stayed inactive on the map screen for a few minutes, my fear was replaced by burning curiosity. What the hell had just happened? What was the rest of the game like? I only had to beat this level with Mothra, and then it was on to the next world. But when I moved Mothra to the red face, the game registered it as me beating the level. I was quite relieved. I tried to prepare myself for the next world. Trance. Okay, this, this is very interesting. I am actually going to leave this here. If you want me to do more of these, let me know in the comment section down below. And if you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like and subscribe for more. It would really help out a ton. And until next time, I will see you guys in the next video. So long. <laughs>